first up, we have Peter Humphreys from the University of Melbourne um, on Bibliometrics and Research Impact, Current State of Play at the University of Melbourne. Uh, Peter Humphreys is a STEM faculty librarian and also coordinates the Research Impact Library Advisory Service, which is supported by discipline-based teams of liaison librarians. Thank you very much, Peter. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much. I'll just um, share my screen so you can see my PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so as, um, as Sarah introduced me, I'm Peter Humphreys, a STEM faculty librarian at University of Melbourne and also Rylas coordinator. Today, I'm going to give just an overview of the state of play regarding use of bibliometrics as evidence of research impact here at the U of M, as seen in particular through the eyes of the Research Impact Library Advisory Service, which is operated by teams of discipline-based liaison librarians, and I coordinate that service. So, to begin with, I'd like to acknowledge that I live and work on the lands of the Wurundjeri, Woiwurrung and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation, who have been custodians of this land for thousands of years. And I'd like to thank them for their care of the land and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging, and extend this to all Indigenous and First Nations peoples here today. Uh, so just to three basic points I'm going to make today provide a very brief history of the Research Impact Library Advisory Service, um, an outline of the U of M's current position on research metrics and how this has impact on wireless service realities from 2021 and beyond. So um, a new service uh, started in 2012 Prior to that, librarians were trained, websites set up, forms set up, and requests from researchers started to come in. So University of Melbourne Library staff, we often talk about RILAS. This acronym has become a noun, an adjective, and a verb. I have to do a RILAS report. I have a RILAS query. I'm going to RILAS this afternoon, etc. It's really been come into the vernacular here. Um, it was a great service. Uh, the quest started to trickle in and then the trickle grew and grew. Liaison librarians completed very detailed metrics reports for individual researchers. So this is an image of our um, uh, website. We used what tools were available, Scopus Web of Science, Publish or Perish. The service evolved as the tools evolved. So we added old metrics via old metrics EFI. We learned more about analysis using SciVal and Insights and getting more sophisticated metrics. Um, but they, um, we provided training and information sessions in all these tools, but there were challenges. As you can see, um, this image on your screen is one taken from a real live Rylas report that, that um, I contributed to a long time ago. Um, incredibly resource intensive, taken the time taken to complete these reports, multiple sheets, hours to complete, and then another liaison librarian would come along and spend a couple of hours to check them. Other challenges were that requesters were often unfamiliar with the research impact issues, what the metrics were demonstrating. There were significant differences between HUS and STEM and also within the disciplines within HUS and STEM, within each of those. Impact definition and measures varied by discipline, context, research outputs. It was very difficult, not impossible to provide a one size fits all standardized service. So in 2017, 2018, we conducted a detailed review of the service. And to do this review, we interviewed um, library managers, uh, research managers and admin staff and researchers, both those past clients of the service and those who had not used it. And the result was a totally new service model, a move to self-help, as you can see on the um, infogram here. 
web pages, email responses to queries, training sessions. These were all fitted in, all amended, sorry, to fit in with our new um, service model, which put tier one and self-help guides at the top. So um, it's been critical and not always easy for Rylas and the liaison librarians at Starford to keep up to date with changes in direction both within the university and within the wider research impact discussion globally. So like all institutions concerned with research, much has changed over the past decade, but in particular, a lot has happened in the last few years. At the end of 2019, the University of Melbourne signed DORA. And the quote on your screens now is from the U of M press release announcing this in 2020. Note, it states that the U of M will continue to use numerical research metrics to inform assessment where appropriate, but never as the never on their own or as the primary or sole assessor. A lot took place in 2020 and 2021. Um, firstly, a, um, Professor Jenny Lewis was appointed as the academic lead on research impact. Um, she became a point of coordination um, to guide planning and programs that support researchers um, who in turn need to plan for, translate and amplify the impact of their research. In 2021, an internal position paper co-authored by Professor Lewis was made available to staff across the university. The paper described an objective to develop a culture supportive of research impact. It's not just about the metrics, it required a multifaceted approach. Uh, also, an internal only website was launched dedicated to the U of M's research impact position and resources. It provides all staff with um, the U of M context in a lot of detail. It provides an overview of consultation that's taken place with researchers, research institutes, etc. It also provides um, the U of M definition of research impact which is here at the bottom of your screen in italics, which is based on the ARC and REF definitions. And the position paper that I referred to is also linked from this website. And you can see an image of it there. But more has been happening since then. A working group was established. ORM, the appropriate use of research metrics, this is a very high level group. It's actually chaired by the PVC Graduate and International Research. This group has a number of objectives and priorities, including reviewing the academic performance development process, developing materials for explaining all principles to managers and academics, also providing examples of all friendly assessment practices, and providing a point of reference for concerns about the uses of metrics. In 2021, the University of Melbourne Governance Group adopted the following ORM principle. That's the, um, once again, the italics on your screen now. In short, this statement acknowledges the place of research metrics as one tool, but not the only tool used to inform assessment of research. All librarians working in this area are very familiar with the advances in functionality and capability of licensed products such as Scival Insights, Dimensions, Altmetric, EFI, that have taken place over the past 10 years or more. The challenge for all of our institutions is to optimise these advances by placing them at the fingertips of our researchers. To be rolled out in 2022 at the University of Melbourne, very soon I hope, a new interface for the researcher's individual dashboard. We currently have a dashboard which does this to a certain extent, but the new version really will take it up several notches. 
It will provide um, multiple links and data feeds to internal and external research processes and information right at the fingertips of the researcher. It will provide individuals um, links to provide individuals information on field weighted citation impact, H index, H5 index, et cetera, et cetera. Lists and links to all the researchers publication outputs will be included in the dashboard. Plus, importantly, the capacity for researchers to add any non-traditional research outputs, outputs or those not indexed by Scopus, Weather Science Dimensions, et cetera, the big databases. Liaison librarians will explain and demonstrate to researchers their research metrics via their new dashboard wherever possible. So all liaison librarians, but particularly those with research support responsibilities, work hard to keep up to date with national and international developments in the research impact and engagement space. And of course, in particular, what's happening at the U of M. I've briefly, briefly described significant change in the service model and priorities that took place in 2017, 2018. And since then, RILAS has continued to incrementally evolve as things around us have evolved. So this is where we are at today. It's critical to the self-help service model that online resources are up-to-date, discipline-specific and suitable for all levels of knowledge. Liaison librarians create and maintain a range of up-to-date online resources. Um, I'm just flashing up a few different ones. As you can see, they, they're targeted to different disciplines and faculties. They require different approaches, but the key messages across them are common to all. Liaison librarians um, deliver a vast amount of information and training sessions either embedded into faculty research development programs or as part of university-wide multidisciplinary research development programs. We answer a steady stream of queries by email and phone. The individual research consultations are the most resource intensive level of service. Um, all requests for research consultations are triaged and an assessment made regarding the suitability of linking a requester to an existing online resource as a first port of call, either instead of or as a preliminary to a face-to-face -face or live research consultation with a liaison librarian. These are the most common questions we answer, but certainly not all. I'm sure everyone here has answered these in a similar one way or another. As a manager, putting a frame around the liaison librarian remit is critical, but very difficult. And researchers can be quite insistent when asking questions. What metrics should I put in my application? Uh, will this get me my grant? How do I impress the assessors? So here are some questions that we are often asked, but we don't feel are within our remit to um, answer. Um, we are asked um, how to write a grant application. Um, we're asked what to include, not to include. And we've been asked uh, to proofread grant applications or segments of them. We do um, refer researchers um, to other parts of the university that can help that help can help them. And it is within our remit to know which parts of the university can help researchers with particular queries. So we try and refer them intelligently and um, not send them down dead dead ends.
So evolution and change in research impact and engagement space continues across internationally, nationally, and at the University of Melbourne. The following are my personal observations. In the noughties and early 2010s, there were few people discussing, in inverted commas, the advantages or disadvantages of research impact metrics or bibliometrics at the U of M. It was a given. More citations equals more impactful research. Now, as I've demonstrated, I've tried to explain, there are very high level internal U of M committees and working groups, as well as multiple cross-faculty communities of practice and discussion groups, all of which are very active. Researchers and professional staff that support researchers are definitely more knowledgeable about what the metrics mean, about the systems and tools that provide them, debates around them, but there is also still a large amount of no or incomplete knowledge out there. I've mentioned as debate and discussion have progressed, so have the systems and the tools. Bibliometrics are now relatively easy to come by from multiple tools that U of M staff have access to. The contradiction is that it's been gradually getting easier and, um, to obtain impact metrics at the same time as the appropriateness of using these metrics has really come into question. Perhaps these two things are not contradictory. The improved technology means that researchers can focus more on the research impact narrative unique to their work instead of spending time wrestling with the numbers. So consequently, for liaison librarians, the focus and priority has shifted to providing training and information sessions and online resources on how to use the tools, including um, a lot for more advanced analysis required by research group leaders and research managers and administrators. Naturally, we still work a lot with individual researchers who struggle to use the tools, even though they are much easier to use, and or understand, they struggle to understand what the metrics actually mean and what they demonstrate, and or they struggle to keep up with the fast moving landscape. Five years ago, a bit longer, who knew what a field weighted citation impact was, or the acronym FWCI, which we see everywhere now. So I think liaison librarians' superpowers lie with understanding what the metrics mean and what they demonstrate. As we all know, there's a hell of a lot of metrics out there, and the differences between them can be very subtle. Liaison librarians, we keep up to date with the new metrics and new functionalities within the tools. We evaluate these and new tools as they come online. How useful will they be or may not be? Very importantly, liaison librarians keep the breast of the broader institutional, national and international debates and the discipline specific issues in research impact and engagement which is also critical. Thank you, everyone. I can now take some questions. Thank you so much, Peter. That was a very interesting talk. We only have a couple of minutes for questions. Um, thank you to everybody. There's quite a number of questions in the Padlet. Um, could I ask everyone who's adding questions to the Padlet, please add them as a separate box. Um, that makes it easier for people like Peter to go in afterwards and answer any questions that we haven't been able to get to in the session. Um, it also just allows us to you, you to like particular questions so we can ask the most popular questions first. So I'm going to start with a popular question here. Um, what has been the response from researchers to these changes? Look, it's interesting because as things have changed and developed, um, uh, many researchers just have adapted fine. They understand the metrics, they understand the tools, and it's not a problem. Um, it's not that 
we try to give everyone a, a level of assistance suitable for their their current knowledge, but the default one is um, self service. So, and I guess that I, I was trying to make that point that over the years, researchers themselves have become much more knowledgeable. There is a lot more knowledge out there about which tools. Um, and um, so it's not, it's not like we're ripping the chair out from underneath them and leaving them high and dry. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's somewhat related to another popular question, which is how research is reacting to being uh, presented with more self-help models of support rather than the kind of curator curated support model that you were painting a picture of yeah. in the earlier years. Um, an another uh, a popular question here is what support do you provide for those areas not covered well by traditional metrics platforms? Yes, and that's where the, the discipline-based teams of liaison librarians um, that, that we work in really shine because those discipline, those um, liaison librarians are working within, um, in particular, the creative arts disciplines um, where, uh, yeah, the traditional scopists, web science, don't work well for them at all. Um, that's where those, so if, uh, everyone here can have a look at our lip guides. I think the Star Lip Guide is the one targeting um, uh, fine arts and music. I think that's brilliant. Um, we do try and direct them to the guides and then talk them through it. And as I said, we will. When it, it is tricky because we only have so many hours in the day and there's only so many liaison librarians and the University of Melbourne is a big institution and we cannot give the same level of service to everyone. There's just not enough of us. So uh, sometimes we have to make a hard call, but we do our best to make sure um, everyone has what they need. But it is hard. Thank, thank you so much, Peter. That was very interesting.